basically we have a geriatric medicine class today geriatrics is basically about cardiovascular and more of neurology movement disorders and and certain problems that you know start uh, appearing by as the age progresses malignancies are also one of them so as far as mrcp part 2 exam is concerned you need to be well aware of the fact that mrcp part 1 exam uh, it is about arriving at a diagnosis and mrcp part 2 is uh you know following up the diagnosis uh, staging the disease uh, applying the principles of treatment as to the, as per the stage of the disease like if the patient has fever you would give paracetamol in oral formulation but if the fever is not getting controlled you go up on the stages as far as the treatment is concerned like you like to give injectable paracetamol you like to give nimesulide or you i mean so, so you stage the disease and then you treat them accordingly so that is mrcp part 2 that is to define a disease process and then to treat them according to the staging of the disease the guidelines the recommendations uh, the investigations that are required to follow up the disease and how you later on look for the complications that can come either by the disease process or by the medicines that you are giving to the patient so this is about mrcp part 2 so let's begin with the uh, questions uh, today so a 68 year old lady who has mild alzheimer's disease so mild alzheimer's disease alzheimer's disease can be staged mild moderate severe so that is done on a mmsc scale so if if the patient is good on mmsc questionnaire answering all the questions they do not have alzheimer's but if they are down by 5 points uh, then it is mild by down by 10 it is moderate and if it is less than 20 then we call it severe alzheimer's disease so a patient with mild alzheimer disease attends the clinic for a review being accompanied review means the patient is already diagnosed being accompanied by her husband she is currently taking the donepezil and has some improvement in her short term memory but mostly she she has begun to suffer from frequent sleep disturbances and waking up very early in the morning like 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the morning her appetite also has decreased markedly she remains in a low mood all throughout the day and tells her husband regularly that she wants to finish her life so basically you want to diagnose as to what is the question here that the patient is going through she takes uh, remipril for hypertension atorvastatin 10 mg for dyslipidemia so but no other regular medication which one of the following is the most suitable next step in the management so what is the answer here first tell me the diagnosis and then we will uh, decide on what is the answer so basically an alzheimer's disease patient uh, who has uh, now developed symptoms of depression uh, she has lost her sleep she has lost her appetite and she is thinking of finishing off her life so what is the situation that we have here so basically this patient has mood related disorder so we have floxetin here we have citalopram here we have sertraline here we have aprovet uh, here and haloperidol so haloperidol will start from below haloperidol is a drug which is given for which is given for anybody for psychosis valproate is given for epilepsy and for chronic headaches sertraline floxetin are very good antidepressants citalopram is also a good antidepressant with a mood elevating action so let's see the answer so we have the answer as citalopram so this basically has uh, this patients of uh, uh, alzheimer's disease they eventually they become depressed they become they have their mood swings and they become in a situation where they dissociated they they just want to finish up their life because they are not happy with the things they are progressing in the manner so basically here the drug that you would want to give is citalopram uh, it it may have minor effects on cognition cognition is already disturbed in case of alzheimers but it has been proven in alzheimers patients to impact their mood and well being in a positive manner so whatever we are having here will be improved with the uh, citalopram there is no clear cut 
एंटी डिप्रेसेंट ड्रग दैट कैन बी गिवन फॉर एल्जाइमर डिजीज बिकॉज ऑल ऑफ दैम विल बिकम यू नो मोर सिडेटेड एंड वी डोंट वॉन्ट दीज पेशेंट्स टू बी मोर सिडेटेड बिकॉज फ्लॉक्सिटेन एंड अदर ड्रग्स वेल प्रोएट Uh, sertarlin they have some sedation effect so we don't want any drug which can sedate the patient even more in case of alzheimers disease so this is the decision making that happens in mrcp part 2 questions so you have to decide among few drugs these drugs are all of them are approved to be used in uh, this condition but uh, this patient does not require anything i mean you can give antidepressants but without any sedative effect okay so now is question number 2 a 69 year old lady is brought to the emergency department very early in the morning uh, with acute shortness of breath such that she feels she is going to die she already has a history of myocardial infarction on two previous occasions she has nyhj class 2 heart failure her current medication includes an ace inhibitor that is ramipril a statin it or vastatin diuretic furosemide and an antiplatelet drug that is aspirin so basically she is on a treatment for coronary artery disease and heart failure that is ramipril and diuretics on examination her blood pressure is 170 by 100 pulse rate is 90 beats per minute and regular her heart sounds are normal on auscultation of her chest crackles to the mid zone bilaterally are heard so she has pulmonary edema her respiratory rate is 26 per minute and oxygen saturation is 91% on room air and she has mild pitting edema of the ankle on investigations you see that hemoglobin is 122 uh, that is 12.2 grams uh, per liter total leukocyte count is normal platelet count is okay sodium is 135 potassium 5.2 bicarbs are also fine creat is 1.3 which is mildly elevated ecg shows sinus rhythm right bundle branch block anterior q waves and anterior t wave inversion chest x ray shows bilateral upper lobe diversion interstitial shadowing consistent with heart failure which one of the following is most appropriate intervention in this scenario iv glycerol glycerin trinitrate iv furosemide iv beta blocker iv uh, sodium nitroprusside or nippb so what is the diagnosis here we have a old lady who already has had to previous myocardial infarction that is coronary artery disease old mi with probably lv dysfunction as well because she has nyhc class 2 dyspnea she is already on treatment but her bp is ex- bp is 170 by 100 by no means this bp is controlled her heart rate is 90 again it is uncontrolled can anybody tell me the gdmt for heart failure that is goal directed medical treatment anyone so geriatrics is nothing geriatrics is all about knowing the proper medicine only the problem the 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 case scenario should be an elderly patient now if you can tell me about this anybody heart failure which are the four drugs which have to be given in patients of heart failure heart failure management requires number 1 you need to get a serum bnp level done so if the bnp level is elevated you need to get an echocardiography done so if the bnp is elevated patient has heart failure echocardiography reveals lv ef reduced then it is heart failure with reduced ejection fraction if it is normal then it is heart failure with preserved ejection fraction so once the patient is in reduced ejection fraction that is where all the therapy comes into play the four agents approved for this one is ace inhibitor arbs and nowadays they are being replaced by arni now i will ask you what arni is i i would reserve an answer but i don't think anybody is going to speak second is spironolactone or mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists third is sglt2 inhibitors and the fourth is beta blockers approved for heart failure itna samajh mein aa gaya are bhai ha ya na mein jawab do ek dur baithe hain hum screen pe hain i need to know if you guys are 
मैम इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन मैम यू मे आस्क यू सर विद पेशेंस हियर यस डॉक गॉट इट आई थिंक आई एम द ओनली वन आई थिंक हु इज गिविंग द एग्जाम हु इज हियर ऑन द थिंग सो बेसिकली वी आर हैविंग अ पेशेंट ऑफ एक्यूट हार्ट फेलियर these four drugs that i have just mentioned they are they are the standard treatment for management of chronic heart failure so this patient in acute heart failure will require only as as you would already know is diuretics so acute heart failure will always need diuretics so the treatment is iv furosemide treatment is iv furosemide so this so that is important that we need to make a diagnosis first what the patient is having right now so this patient is the uh, having a diagnosis of acute heart failure and in acute heart failure the guidelines the nice guidelines they suggest directly that we need to give iv diuretic therapy all right question number 3 a 55 year old lady with a history of rheumatoid arthritis treated with methotrexate and etnarcept comes to emergency department for a review so her husband has been diagnosed with influenza in the past 24 hours and is currently taking regular paracetamol and ibuprofen for fevers rigors and a dry cough on examination her blood pressure is 120 by 70 pulse rate is 68 per minutes and regular her chest is clear and she does not have any fever which one of the following is correct plan for influenza prophylaxis for this lady See here are three things. One is that the lady is on immunosuppressants, that is methotrexate and etanercept. Second, her husband has influenza, which is a viral disease with quite high degree of communicability. Third is that we want to protect our patient who is not vaccinated against uh, influenza. So we need to give her a prophylaxis. Now the the options that we have is no prophylaxis needed: amantadine, ostel, oseltamivir, zenamivir, and amoxicillin. so basically amoxicillin is out because this is an antibiotic a uh, no prophylaxis needed is not the answer because our patient is on immuno uh, is on immunosuppressants then comes amantadine or seltamivir or zenamivir so out of them amantadine is was used in the treatment of influenza or seltamivir is used in broad spectrum influenza management may it be swine flu h1n1 h3n2 or influenza a or b zenamivir is not approved for any prophylaxis so the answer is oseltamivir so nice guidelines on influenza prophylaxis recommends prophylaxis with this drug within 48 hours of close contact our patient is high risk because he is on methotrexate and etanercept which increases the risk of severe influenza infection 